Hi, I'm Lisa, and this week on NASA Now, we'll meet an electrical engineer who really gets a charge out of studying energy from the sun. But before we get to that, let's find out what else is happening at NASA Now. <laughs> Scientists at NASA Ames are conducting cutting-edge research in the development of clean energy technology. Their focus is on advancing biofuels, solar, and wind technologies that will help reduce our nation's dependence on petroleum-based fossil fuels. By advancing clean energy technologies, NASA Ames hopes to help our nation reduce greenhouse gases. Now, let's travel back to the past. In 1609, Galileo Galilei pioneered the use of the telescope and recorded sunspots. His detailed sketches produced in 1612 revealed that the sun was a dynamic force. These sketches have led astronomers from around the world to investigate the sun and how it affects life on Earth. People have been harnessing the sun's power for a very long time. Since the late 1800s, scientists have known how to convert the sun's energy into electricity. Today, solar energy has become the prime source of power for many of NASA's missions. The most impressive is the International Space Station. Here to tell us about the mechanics of solar panels and the amazing recent advancements in solar technology is NASA electrical engineer Jeremiah McNatt. Hi, I'm Jeremiah McNatt, and this is the Solar Cell Growth Lab at the NASA Human Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. Photovoltaics, or solar cells, are referred to as a green technology, a renewable energy resource. And that's because once the cell is made and once that panel is made, it will continue to produce electricity as long as the sun's out without giving off any pollutants. So we have a solar cell. It's a special semiconductor that's designed to convert sunlight into electricity. How that happens is the sun's rays come down to Earth and they are absorbed by that semiconductor. That's your solar cell. What happens inside the solar cell is those photons from the sun, they come in and they excite electrons inside the crystal of the semiconductor. Those electrons are now free to move. If they're in the right orientation, you have the right electrical structure of your sample, what you can then do is produce an electric field, which you can then make use of that electricity. A solar panel is a collection of solar cells strung together with wires in a way to produce a certain voltage and current to make a certain amount of power for whatever application you're going to need it for. There's a wide variety of solar panels, and each one specific to the environment that it's going to be placed in. On Earth, we have things like the garden lights. Those ones are made to be outside to withstand snow, rain, heat. But in space, we don't have those issues, but we have other problems like radiation and maybe micrometeorites. So the solar panels need to be designed to withstand that. Probably the most well-known use of solar panels in space is the International Space Station. You can see on this model, the space station has a series of solar arrays. These arrays are what powers the station. They are made up of panels like this. You can see all the individual cells have been connected in such a way to produce the proper amount of power needed to run the station. Each one of these cells is around 15% efficient. And at the time that the space station was designed, that was state of the art. We've now made improvements beyond that and have cells that are around this size. They're about half the size, but can produce the same amount of power because the efficiency is about twice that of the silicon cell. Solar cells do not actually store electricity. All they do is generate it. To store it, you need another place to put it, like a battery. As for the lifetime of solar panels, the cells themselves, they'll last almost indefinitely. But because of some of the electrical contacts they have on there and some of the metals they have on there, those will wear away. So about 20 to 25 years is the expected lifetime for most solar cells and solar panels. So here at NASA Glenn, we focus on the high efficiency solar cell devices. We do that with this system here. Our reactions occur inside this chamber. We'll take substrates, something like this two inch wafer, load them up inside a platform in this chamber we then use the remote controls to transfer them into our system. We can come over here to the computer where we will load up a recipe 
The recipe has all of the files that um, dictate what semiconductor we're going to be growing for how long and under what flows, all the conditions. The best advice I can give to somebody who wants to be an engineer at NASA is to always keep uh, tinkering with things and finding out how things work. As a kid, I was always taking things apart and I'd give them to my mom and saying, put them back together for me. And it was always given back to me of a, well, you took it apart, figure out how to put it back together. I think that's kind of what got me to where I am. The degrees are great and that's what will get you in the door, but that passion to know how things operate and why they work is really what uh, keeps the work exciting. Did you know that there was a time when electricity in the White House was partially produced by solar panels? Well, in 1977, President Jimmy Carter had an expansive row of 32 solar panels installed on the West Wing. The panels were removed in 1986 by President Ronald Reagan. Today, plans are in place once again to install solar panels on the White House by spring of 2011. how NASA is making major advancements in solar technology. Now it's your turn. Check out this cool activity found right here on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Now you can get into the act and design a podcast about solar energy or a solar array. Just go to NASA's Do It Yourself website for clips, tips, and information on how to submit your podcast. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to join us next week when we'll see what the crew of Expedition 26 is up to on board the International Space Station. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.